The following teacher development program is brought to you by the Multi-Choice Africa Foundation. Thanks. It's Mrs. Patel's famous chocolate cake. You can't say no. Got to watch this waistline. Oh, nonsense, man. Mm -mm. Can't look and can't touch. You're really serious about this, aren't you? I've never waited this much before. And I'm a PE teacher. Yeah, they talk about calculating your body mass index. And they're talking Greek to me. I don't understand this. Well, which is why you have me. Tables and formulas are my daily bread. Hey, I see you getting an early start. Uh, Here, I've got the relevant tables for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see if I can make sense <laughs> of this. Well, actually, no, 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 no. It's my body, it's my mess index. My turn first. Well, I was only just trying to help you work it out. Okay, body mass index, this is, you can call it BMI. Mm. BMI is equal to weight divided by height squared. So I go 85 kilograms, which is my weight, divided by 1.7, and it gives me, let's do that. Okay, a, a, 85 divided by 1.7 equal to 50. And then I multiply that by 50 because of the height square thing. No, that's the wrong order. You see, height is the only thing that's squared, not the weight. So you first have to get your height squared answer, then you do the calculations. Or take a scientific calculator where you can put in the brackets. But now, unfortunately, we just have this old plain calculator. OK. First, let's do the height squared. 1.7 times 1.7 is equal to 2.89. Right? So what we do is we take my weight, which is 85 kilograms divided by 2. 0.89 that is equal to 29.4. Let, let's see where that puts you, whether you anorexic or obese. Uh oh. But what? You are overweight. Damn. Ah, Lebukhang, it's not all that bad. I mean, older men like you don't need to look like Muhammad Ali in his prime, you know. Yeah. Older men? Older men? Talk about putting my foot in it. Well, you are somewhat overweight, but you're certainly young enough to lose it with some exercise and diet. It's only when kids are obese that I really get worried. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's why we've incorporated nutrition and BMI and so on into the math literacy syllabus. We need a young, healthier population. 
people, today we will be talking about nutrition. Ms. Portia Kumalo from Azara High School is teaching a lesson on nutrition. She starts off by asking the learners what units we use to measure the energy in food. I think uh, they are measured in kilograms and some in milliliters. But I think it's calories. That is correct. Food is measured in calories. In South Africa, we use metric units and the calorie is not a metric unit. Portia explains how to convert from calories to joules. One calorie is equal to 4,184 joules. Next, she asked the learners to look for the recommended daily allowance or RDA information on different food containers. The RDA information breaks down the energy in food into various categories. Energy from carbohydrates, energy from protein, and energy from fats. The learners have to choose one of the snacks listed on the worksheet. The first task they have to do is to calculate what percentage of energy they will get from fat from the snack they have chosen. Fat, protein and energy. Okay people, I'll just do an example on how to calculate the energy using this muffin here. When I look at the pack here of a muffin, it consists of the energy in kilojoules, it's 1450 kilojoules. Then the fat, the total fat from this is 12.9 grams. Energy from fat, in my case of the muffins, it's 12.9. Then we are going to multiply it. When you look at the second page of your table, there is fats there, that gives you 37.656. Then your answer is 485.7624. That is in kilojoules. Then you're going to get, take this total of kilojoules that you get from energy, divide it with the total energy that you've got there. In, in my product is 1450. Then you take this and divide by that, you get 33.5%. Then it means from this muffins, that is the percentage that you get, it's 33.5% of fat. Portia explains that they should not have more than 30% fat in a healthy snack. You mustn't get more than 30% of fat from the, from the energy that you eat, from the food that you eat then it means this is more than 30% because this will give you 34%, meaning the muffins are not too good to eat because if you eat a lot of them, you're going to get fat. Total percent percentage we got from energy we got from energy from fat is 58.4. I think it's not good because it's over 30 percent. The percentage of energy from fat we got we did salted crackers and it came to 23 percent. Do you think it's a good snack that you can eat? It? Do you think it's healthy? It's only 23 energy, uh, 23 percent energy from fat, which is not a lot. So um, you wouldn't really gain any. Fat from it. To counter too much junk food, the best way to work it off is through exercise. 
Poshia emphasizes that extreme diets are not the answer. Fat is your body's way of saving energy for a rainy day. However, if you burn about 40,000 more joules than, your, than you consume, you will lose about one kg of your body fat. The best way of losing weight is exercising because there are two ways, either you exercise or eating less. But now, the research that has been done recently, it says that eating less, it's not healthy. It's more healthier if you want to lose weight than you exercise. Because if you eat less, you might end up losing more than what you wanted to lose. Then when you stop eating less, then you're going to eat double what you are supposed to eat. Each learner has to pick their favorite form of exercise from the list in the worksheet. Portia asks the learners to calculate how much energy they'll burn per minute for the exercise they pick. If, for an example, you choose the activity as basketball, then the energy that is burnt per kilogram per minute is 0 0.891. Then how are you going to calculate that? You are going to take your mass, or that the weight that you have, then you multiply it by the value that you've got there, which is 0 0.91. Then you will be calculating the loss of energy per kilogram per minute that you can lose. It's important that learners use the units to check if they use the correct formula. Portia explains why the answer should come out in minutes. Now, I just want to give you an example. Let's say you have chosen aerobics. This is an example of aerobics here. Let's see if, let's say, you, you put more exercise, you exercise more. How much energy in kilojoules are you going to lose there? We've got for one minute, you lose 0 0.569 kilojoules. Then if, let's say, you exercise for 10 minutes, then you are going to get 5,69 kilojoules. That is the energy that you are going to lose there. Then if you have exercised for 20 minutes, then that will be 11,38 kilojoules. Then 30 minutes, it's 17,07. Then we ha you need to draw the graph so that we can see how will be the graph if we plot it here. If you exercise for 10 minutes, then you lose 5,69. Then this is where I've plotted my points. This is a graph with time in minutes here. This is the energy in kilojoules. This is the first point there. Who can come and point, do this point for me? 20 minutes, then you have to lose 11,38 kilojoules. Who wants to do the 30 minutes? In 30 minutes, you are supposed to lose 17,07. You can see with the graph here, we have a proportional graph. That is a straight line graph. It means that when the time increases, then also the energy that you lose increases. If, let's say, you exercise for 60 minutes, if you exercise for 60 minutes, meaning that the energy that you are going to lose by then, it's about 38 kilojoules. Each learner in a group has chosen a different form of exercise, even though each group has the same snack. They calculate the amount of kilojoules their exercise will burn, and then they compare how long they should exercise to burn off the kilojoules they put on from the snack. We chose popcorn, and the exercise I chose was basketball. So at times, the amount that I got from, from, from the earlier exercise to, to 57,02, and I got eight minutes. He chose bicycling, and... Uh, he used, his amount was 20 minutes. Ashley chose basketball and his amount was nine minutes. Mark chose aerobic dance and his amount was 14 minutes. Our group chose total crackers. It was our food. When I multiplied, I, um, I, cho I chose aerobic dance and it came to seven minutes. While Melissa chose, she, it came to 10 minutes. 
and uh, Brisilla chose, it came to eight minutes, and when Theodora chose, she chose soccer and it came to five minutes. If you chose soccer, you'll be able to burn fat faster. And aerobic dance, you will lose, you wouldn't, you'll lose about, you'll have to work up for seven minutes to lose energy, the same amount of energy. Portia has used mathematical literacy to inspire a healthy lifestyle in the learners. Through allowing them to discover the facts themselves, she has helped them to see why nutrition and exercise are important. What's my ideal BMI? Well, it depends on whether you're a man or a woman and your age. Look at the part where it says men between 25 and 35. Oh, it looks like 28 is my ideal BMI. Wait a minute. We could use the calculation to figure out how much I should weigh. Of course you can, but just use a bit of maths. Okay. Right, check if I'm right. Mm -hmm. I must write out the equation so that the, the weight is unknown. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I must multiply both sides, on, on both sides, right, with what's under the line, all right? So, to get my ideal weight, I should multiply 28, the ideal BMI, with my height squared 2.89, 80.92. So, you must weigh about 81 kilos. Uh-uh. Get started. Mm -mm. It, go! Okay, let's see my weight this morning. My height squared is 2.89. Okay, that hasn't changed. Yes! Yes! I'm marginally overweight now. Okay, normal range, here I come. Fantastic, I'm getting pumped up, me! Just remember, BMI is not the only indicator of health risks. Diet's important too. <laughs> There's lots of maths in nutrition. As a dietitian, we use maths all day, every day. You simply can't be a dietitian without using maths. It's absolutely integral. From the time the patient walks in, the very first thing that we do is we will take the height and the weight of the patient. That is absolutely integral. Depending on the patient, sometimes I have bodybuilders who are trying to put on weight, in which case we, we do do body fat percentages and muscle mass percentage and fluid mass percentages. Then we would also then calculate the energy requirements based on the amount of um, exercise they do and then work out an eating plan as to whether they are trying to increase their weight or decrease their weight. So for example, I will analyze your intake and say to you, you have 60% of your eating is carbohydrate. And we will then compare that on a, on a graph to what is the norm for your age, for your height, that you should be in. So a graph is very important in that respect. Very clearly, a pie graph shows us instantly in one picture what this patient is eating, what they should eat, and what they should not be doing. Calorie and a kilojoule are the same thing essentially, they measure energy. If I were converting kilojoules into calories, I would divide by 4.2. So if I said I was giving you a 7,500 kilojoule diet, or 5,000 kilojoules, or 4,800, I would divide by 4.2, that would give me about 1,140 uh, 1, calories per day. So depending on your body's requirements, you must understand that every person has a different energy need depending on their height, their weight, their body frame, frame structure, and the amount of exercise they do. Oh, okay, besides diet and exercise, what else is important when it comes to health and chronic diseases? Well, at your age, in our age, it's important to monitor cholesterol and blood pressure and so on. And more importantly, your waist circumference. Do you have your measurement? Yeah. Okay. 
I want to show you something. Get up. Opportunity. Oh, it's nice, this clothes. <clears throat> yeah, okay. I'll show you something. 